you doing out here all by yourself? I'm going to get some more munchies. Where's my brother? He and Olivia went downstairs, I think, something about the state room. Oh, jeez. I like Olivia. She seems to be helping him get past whatever happened in Memphis. Something happened? Well, there was a girl in a ring. He doesn't like to talk about it, but uh, I can see it in his eyes and I can hear it in his songs and he buries himself in his work, which is just not my brother. Well, that is a good thing if you are chief of staff. I mean, it's the type of job that will take any time you're willing to give it. Maybe that's why he's been more of himself lately since he's stepped down. He's getting his life back. I just hope it's not at the expense of yours. No, no, I was, I was happy to take over. I just, I know the staff is not really a, a fan of <laughs> all of my policies. Oh, come on. It was beneficial to GH and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Thank you for saying that. Just don't let it get to the point where it, it eclipses everything else, okay? Yeah, sometimes it's difficult to see the forest for the trees. So for tonight, I want you to focus on all those beautiful stars. <laughs> and the ones you see in Patrick's eyes. There you are. How's it going? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. You're the first person to ask. Everyone on this boat is proud of you and happy for you, especially your brother. Mm. Yes, he's been very nice to throw me a bone because he's secure in his own superiority. Mm. I know exactly what you're doing. I've done it myself. You have a perfect sibling. You can jump through hoops of fire and no one even notice. We're talking about Steve here? Uh -oh. No, my sister Sarah, the brilliant cardiologist. Pediatric cardiologist. I thought you two were close. Well, we are now. Once I realized resenting her all these years only robbed me of having a relationship with her. Uh, well, I think tonight was all about bringing my brother and I closer, bridging that gap, becoming his equal, but he was very quick to set me straight. Why? What did he say? The truth. That I got a lot to prove. Well, not to me. If you apply the same principle, the same methodology to an inoperable tumor, it then it would be... It sounds so simple. Well, it was. It was. It was, it was very easy. Well, then how come nobody else figured it out before, including your dad? Because they didn't have the same technology when he was working on things. We just happened to live in a better time. So... I think you're just being modest. Well, what can I say? You bring it out in me. I don't know why. I feel like I could just talk to you about this for hours and, and more than likely bore you to absolute tears. You see me crying? Yeah, well, I just, just, it's, I wish I could talk to Maxie about this stuff. Oh, well, I'm not gonna touch that one. But, no, no, okay, don't misunderstand me. I, Maxie, I, you know, she, she's, she's great. I, she makes me very happy. She's, you know, she's sexy and confident. And she's very funny. She's very funny. And she's not here. No. no. You know, she eventually offered to come, but I, uh, I turned her down. Well, how many times have you, has she turned you down? Yeah, well, you, you, you got me there. I guess it's pretty obvious that she doesn't want to make our relationship a priority, but I don't think she wants any relationship to be a priority in her life. Because you know, she doesn't want to invest too much, so she doesn't risk losing. You know, if somebody you know, disappears out of her life, she gets hurt. Well, we all lose people. Yeah, and we all deal with it in a different way. She had two parents that walked out of her life, and you know, her sister was murdered, and her cousin's heart beats in her chest every single day as a constant reminder of loss. I think you see this more profoundly than she does. Well, things resonate with Maxie, and so she deflects. She puts all that energy into the magazine, you know, which is frivolous and permanent by design. You know, she's not incapable of investing. She's had this lasting attachment to Spinelli. Which I don't completely understand. Well, he's safe. She can keep him wrapped around her little finger, and it doesn't cost her anything. She did help him quite a bit during that whole breakdown thing when he was turned to the jackal, PI, whatever caused that. Right, which makes him even more devoted to her, so she has this sympathetic shoulder without a commitment. Yeah. Why does that become such a bad word? Why does everyone run away from it? What? Commitment? <sighs> I mean, you can't just say the words and then take them back. 
You know, you can't set up an expectation and, and then just change your mind. Other people are involved. There are kids involved. It's not just you and your feelings. Why do I get the feeling we're not talking about Spinelli anymore? I'm sorry. Lucky's gone. Gone where? I don't know. I don't know, and I don't really think he cares. He just had to get away from me before he relapsed into our mutual addiction of a relationship. His words, not mine. That's kind of harsh. Yeah, it is harsh, especially since I have loved him since I was 15. And now he's afraid I'm the one who's going to ruin him. Why is it that some people have no trouble going for what they want, just trampling over everyone in their path, no apologies, and yet we admire them for it. We call them strong. Is it strength or is it just selfishness? Maybe it's the same thing. What are, what are you drawing? Oh, nothing. Oh, come on, let me say no, it. No, 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 it's just, just a habit of mine. And how long have you had this habit for? <laughs> Quite some time, actually. I applied for art school once. It was my dream to live in Manhattan and sell my paintings in the village on the weekends. <laughs> okay, and what the hell happened? A life happened. I have kids to feed and bills to pay. There's just not a whole lot of time for art. You gotta make the time. You know, you gotta create that space for your passion. You know, call it selfish or call it strength. You just, you have to take care of yourself a little. It's funny, I was just having the same conversation with Robin. I was telling her that she needs to find a balance between her job and the rest of her life. Yeah. I'm much better at giving advice than taking it. Uh, yeah, no kidding. I mean, who am I to say anything right now? Anything about balance with all this stuff that's coming my way now that I'm a distinguished doctor. Mm. <laughs> or uh, not so distinguished if you talk to my brother. Oh, please, your research speaks for itself. I mean, the fact that the FDA wants to move forward with the trial is exciting. Yeah, but why do I have this feeling inside that I just want to run away? I, uh, it's stressful. I, I'm, I'm concerned. Like, what, what if I fail? What if you don't? I what mean, if the trial is a huge success? I might be even more afraid of that. Why? What if success leaves me feeling emptier than I do now? I know what it feels like to be empty. Like there's this little space inside reserved for happiness that doesn't quite ever get filled up. And if it does, by someone whose smile just lights up your world, it's only temporary. And then it's gone. And then that emptiness is, it's back. I'm sorry. Matt, don't let that happen to you. You are so much better than you realize. You are so deserving of happiness and love, and you really deserve to be with somebody who respects you and fulfills you.